Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in this video, I'm going to show you iOS 12 running on an iPhone 10. So Apple just recently announced iOS 12, and it is available as a beta to uh, developers. So in this video, I'm going to demo all the possible new features you can expect to see on iOS 12 when it gets released down the road uh, in September sometime. So let's go to the settings really quick. Uh, I do want to show you that this is in fact iOS 12. Tap on general, go to software update, and as you can see, this is iOS 12.0, and this is the beta version, so it's going to have some bugs. It may not look perfect, but I do want to highlight as many new features as I can in this video. One of the major features that everybody has been waiting for is the group notifications in the notifications panel. So if you drop down the notifications panel over here, uh, you'll see that now I just sent myself six messages from my other phone and they're all grouped together into this one block uh, of messages notifications. And the same is applicable to the, to the YouTube Studio app over here. Uh, it's, they're all grouped together. The same is happening over here with the YouTube app and the news app as you can see. So what you can do with these guys is you can tap on them and that expands all the messages. You can see them individually one by one. You can scroll down. Uh, you can individually deal with them one by one if you so desire or uh, you can tap show less again and then you can actually uh, deal with them as a group if you swipe to this side you have all the regular options manage view clear so let's push them back over here one more time i want to show you uh, as you can see you can do the same thing with these guys so if i tap on the youtube studio notifications if i tap it You'll see all the notifications I'm getting on the YouTube Studio uh, grouped together, but they also, they're also expandable. And again, I can uh, deal with them individually one by one, as you can see. So tap show less, and I'm going to show you one more thing. If you swipe over one more time, whether you do this as a group or an individual, it's the same thing. Uh, you can tap on manage, and this gives you the manage notifications option. So you can either choose these to be delivered quietly to you, meaning they will bypass the lock screen and they'll go straight into the actual uh, notifications panel. So you will not see messages on the lock screen anymore, but you will see them when you pull down the notifications panel. Or you can simply turn them off right from here. And uh, if you do that, you will not see that notification at all. So those are the notification enhancements that you can expect to see on iOS 12 when you get it later. And then, of course, you can tap on this guy or the cancel to cancel it or go to settings. If you want to go into the detail settings, you can go right there. And this is just a regular screen that we know uh, how to use. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the performance. Now, I cannot show you that right now, but Apple is saying they're going to make some tweaks to their operating system. So when you launch an application, it's going to launch faster. And I can tell you right now. Uh, I was running iOS 11 right before this and I just did the upgrade. So when I do tap the weather application, it, it does launch much quicker than the iOS 11 version, except that this is a beta, so there are a lot of bugs happening right now. One more thing they did was they added some new tab into the news application. So if you use the news application a lot, and if you look at the bottom, uh, if you have iOS 12 right now, you'll see that uh, you're not going to see this uh, tab over here. This is the browse tab, which makes it easier for you to browse through the news. So if I tap on browse, it gives me the full categories. Uh, and I, of course, as usual, I can go and I can edit these categories by tapping that edit button. So I can curate the browse feature to my own needs. So let's click done over here and let's go back out. So that's the only update they have in the news application. Now, before I move into the actual and emoji enhancements, I'm going to show you one more thing. The stocks application has been updated as well. So if I go to stocks now, uh, you'll see a new setup on the top. You have the stocks at the bottom. You have stories relating to the stock. So this is fed from the news application, but it is in fact stories relating to actual stocks. I can pull this up if I wanted to, to read the actual news or just pull it down. Now, if I do pull this up, the stocks go up here and they actually uh, move from side to side, which is a nice little uh, animation. And if I pull it down, I can see the stocks. And if I tap on individual stocks, I can get much more detail now than I used to be able to get with the old useless stock application. So I can tap things. I can see the uh, performance of this stock in a month, in three months, six months, all the way up to a year. All right. Now let's move on to the enhancements that we can expect on the Animoji and also something called Memoji 
that allows you to create your own an emoji. So let me go into my text messages and if I tap over here and I, if I tap on the App Store icon, you'll see the an emoji icon. If I tap on this guy, uh, first and foremost, I want to show you guys that we have four new an emojis. Uh, we have this one over here. Uh, we have this one, the T-Rex. Uh, we have this koala one and of course we have this one over here and I'm not going to show you my face but basically uh, this these new ones are going to give you even more ways to interact with your friends or whatever you want to do with the emojis uh, but it does now also recognize the actual tongue movement now let me show you what that looks like really quickly so here's an, an emoji I recorded right here so if I tap on this guy it's going to expand I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you the things it can do so uh, there we go. The tongue can now be shown in your an emojis if that's your thing. All righty. Uh, nothing that impresses me, but some people might actually like this. So an emojis are now, in fact, more advanced than before. But on top of that, if I go back here and if I expand this thing, you'll see that there's a new option on the top that says plus. This actually allows you to add a new an emoji that you create. It is called me emoji. So if I click plus, you get this entire playground. Uh, from here, you can pick a skin color if you want. As you can see, any skin color that you want. Uh, after you uh, pick a skin color, you can actually pick if you want to add freckles on the screen, uh, on the face or not, just like that. And then you can swipe over, go to the hairstyle, and pick all these different hairstyles as you desire. So there we go. And then you can go over, you can do the head shape, you have all these different options. And as you play with these guys, you see a real-time reflection right over here. And let's go for the eyes. So you can pick what kind of eyes you want. You can pick what kind of brows you want. Anything that you want. Nose and lips, uh, ears, small ones, big ones, humongous ones, whatever you need. Uh, facial hair if you want any, as you can see. Uh, you can add sunglasses too or regular glasses. So let's uh, add anything over here. And then you have the headwear, I can add a hat, and then uh, the color for the hat, and all this good stuff. Then you click done, and you have your own an emoji created right on the spot that you can use. Uh, it'll, it'll show up right here. So you don't have to just make one. You can make several personalized an emojis or memojis as you please. Okay, if you tap this, you can edit this, you can duplicate this, or you can remove this. Uh, click done. And that is the new features and enhancements you'll find on an emoji side. Okay, so next up, let's go to the settings. And over here, you're going to see a new menu item called the screen time. Uh, this is a pretty cool little um, uh, interface. It tells you how much time you're spending on your phone in relation to apps. And then it makes you uh, suggestions for you to chill out. So basically, if you are playing games for too long, this is going to actually advise you uh, that you are playing games for two hours or two more hours a day and it might even allow you to limit your activity with that one single app. So if I tap on this guy, it'll give you a breakdown. It's, it's saying that today uh, I have been using settings, messages, uh, measure uh, app, news, stocks, whatever, and gives you a little graphical chart on that so you have an idea of what you've been doing. Uh, of course, because I just updated this today, this is all I'm going to see. If I go to last seven days, it, it'll, it'll also give me a, a summary, but it's going to only based on today. Now, if I go back to screen time, I can do several things over here. I can do downtime. So this allows you to set a schedule so I can spend time away from the actual screen. So if you're overusing your iPhone and the phone gives you an alert, you can go and you can schedule a downtime so you don't spend as much time with the iPhone and you can do other things in life that might be more important. So Apple is now giving you these options. They also allow you to set the app limits. So if I tap on the app limits, as you can see, I can tap on add limit. Uh, I can pick games. I can click add and I can say that I only want to be able to play games on my phone 20 minutes a day. So if I um, uh, go back here, the games, it says 20 minutes. So if I play games more than 20 minutes, it's going to disable the game. It's going to send me a notification or something along that line. And of course, you can add uh, apps into Always Allowed, which is pretty great. 
So if there's an app that you just have to use at all times, such as the phone, messages, or FaceTime, because communication is important, you can put them into allowed apps. And of course, you can do more down here. This is also a very nice customizable interface. And of course, there's a bunch of other things over here that are probably very easy to understand once you get down to using this thing. Now, the next thing that is really, really cool, something that I'm not going to be able to show you guys here, has to do with CarPlay. Now, this is a feature that I've really been waiting for. Uh, now, what's going to happen is you are able to uh, go and use CarPlay uh, with apps like Google Maps, which is fantastic. So if I attach this iPhone to my car with iOS 12, uh, normally I can only use uh, the uh, Apple Maps, which are not as accurate as Google Maps. But now with this update, Google Maps is in fact supported. That is pretty damn awesome. So those are the things I wanna highlight in iOS 12. There is a couple more things that I could talk about, but it's really hard to demonstrate them with the buggy iOS 12 beta software. So as I get more updates and stability, I'll show you more and more. Uh, for now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just drop them down below. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. If you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.